Um, my name is Nurbal. I'm with the uh, MySQL engineering team. Um, I'm working on MySQL Optimizer, mostly with JS, actually. Um, that's not what I'm talking about today. We have a lot of new features. Uh, we have JSON document stores. We have generated columns, virtual columns, uh, page compression, and partitioning and stuff. And I'm not going to talk about any of that. I'm going to talk about what MySQL 5.7 gives to um, package maintainers in, in distros. Not only MySQL package maintainers, I work on a MySQL packaging team myself in Debian, um, but also to all the applications that use MySQL. So if you use the client library, you can uh, also, uh, there, there are some changes in MySQL 5.7 that we might want to be aware of. As you might know, 5.7 is not out yet. We haven't finished MySQL 5.7. It's uh, release candidate two, I think. Uh, but still, nothing is really fixed, so anything I say here, may, well, it might not end up in the final 5.7, but we're pretty sure it will. Um, so I'm going to start with how we, just short how we interact with distros, especially Debian. Um, then I'm going to talk about some changes that we actually introduced in Debian with MySQL 5.6, and not 5.7, uh, about MyConf. Um, goes through some things we've done for uh, systemd support, some changes to the MySQL client library, some security hardening uh, features, and some other changes that we made that you might want to know what. So let's just get started with the distros. Um, or I can just go to this page. This is a faceless company brand thing that you don't know how to contact. Uh, this actually has an email address, and here is the face. Uh, so I'm, if you don't know, I'm the single point of contact for package maintainers that want to talk about MySQL servers uh, particularly, but also if you have other MySQL products you want to talk about, just come to me. I'll get you in touch with the right person. Um, I've been that for a couple of years now. Um, four, I think, maybe. Um, and uh, I'm kind of answering questions that are directed to MySQL engineering. Uh, so if you have some, some kind of technical issues, uh, I can probably not answer the question, but I can find some people that will as answer that question. Um, if it's DIS, I can probably answer. Um, but the point is that I'm in engineering. I'm a developer. I know what the technical stuff I'm talking about. I pro can probably understand your technical question. Um, we also have release engineering people working um, in distros. Um, we've had a um, release engineer in uh, Fedora for uh, a couple of years. Uh, he's now a co-maintainer of the MySQL package there, MySQL server package. Um, we've had a release engineer in, in Debian as well. Um, but he's uh, kind of leaving Oracle, so we have a new guy coming in. So if you ever meet Lars, he will probably be happy that you know that he's working with Debian and he's trying to get a Debian maintainer status someday. He's real new to that, so it will happen later, not today. But um, uh, that's kind of the goal we have. We know the MySQL packaging team in Debian is understaffed uh, when it comes to people upload rights. Um, so that's why we need a maintainer to offload um, James, who's doing James Page, who's doing most of that work now. Um, my work, uh, since he is trying to get his maintainer status, I try to not actually push fixes and stuff. I, I want him to do th those fixes and, and push that. Um, so I try to coordinate mostly between distros. So if Debian wants to do something and Red Hat wants to do something else, and there's some SUSE open SUSE guys here, if they want to do something in one way, I can try to contact these package maintainers, try to find a solution that works for all, so that we don't diverge between distros. MySQL and Linux should be MySQL and Linux, and, and not different on each platform. Well, unless it has to be because of some choice of init system or whatever. Um, and we also discuss, uh, engage uh, package maintainers when we have important changes coming up. Uh, we had some security enhancements that we actually have been allowed to push into 
uh, stable releases because it's so it it's, uh, doesn't disturb anything that's currently installed, and it's so important to enhance security. Um, but mostly, we try to avoid making changes in in stable releases. We have um, an agreement with uh, Canonical, the uh, what's called the uh, micro-release exception for for MySQL, which means that they don't really they will take all our patches because they trust our our uh, quality assurance. Um, but that does, that means that we really we really don't want to push too much stuff into stable releases. Um, actually, the distros. I think Debian is probably the most conservative one that we're dealing with. There's no problem with that. It's just a fact that Debian is more conservative. I think as a user, that's a real good thing as well. Um, so often we will try to kind of clear this with Debian people first. Um, Debian will be first in line because they're usually the most restrictive ones, and if they approve it, we can pre pretty much uh, kind of expect the other ones to approve it as well. Um, so that's kind of the way it works. But we're also maybe a bit more embedded into Debian than into other distros, maybe because I'm um, Debian and Ubuntu user myself. I use both, actually. Um, one of the things we worked out in Debian, uh, Canonical invited all of the MySQL packaging team to London uh, last year, last Christmas. Uh, we um, figured out how to make MySQL under forks, there's MariaDB and Percon as well in, in Debian, how to make them all live together without getting too much inter-package dependencies. Um, so we split the configuration file, which has got all the forks use the same uh, configuration file as, as MySQL. Um, there's also uh, the client and service using the same configuration file, which makes it even more complicated because there's only one uh, there's the uh, libmysql client library is only one copy. There's no MariaDB version of that. They have a, a separate one. Um, so it's really a complicated mix of client and server options with different types of servers. And we finally made uh, a solution to that. Uh, it comes in Debian with MySQL 5.6. Uh, and um, it really just cre creates kind of an alternatives-like system for the MyConf file. Um, we also, as MySQL and, uh, and uh, especially MariaDB are diverging, they're already not fully disk compatible depending on which feature it's using. Um, there are plans in, how, in there how to kind of split the data directories so that they don't kind of compete for the same database directory. And then maybe have migration tools if you want to have that. Um, kind of to the extent that we are able to create uh, migration tools and and have resources to do that, but um, I I personally think that we might have to split one day because they are diverging. I think uh, MariaDB 10 is doing something that MySQL 5.6 can't read, and MySQL 5.7 will definitely do something that MariaDB 10 can't read. So there are things we do to the data formats that are not compatible between the uh, those two. Percona is pretty much on the same level as my, uh, MySQL because they just add patches to, to our source code. Um, but that's in 5.6. The real 5.7 stuff, um, if you notice, Debian has started to package system D. Uh, I don't know if any, did anyone miss that. Um, this is um, something we will have to think about as well. Uh, we've chosen to, instead of kind of going all native on systemd. Uh, we can't do that, um, but we can do that in, in some systems, but we can't do that for all operating systems. So we chose to make a uh, system 5-like daemon, just make sure that it works exactly the way that systemd expects it to. So detaching at the correct point when the socket is ready, when we've done all the um, InnoDB uh, recovery and all that stuff, um, so that systemd really understands when MySQL is up and running. Um, but we still have System 5 in its scripts, uh, and it runs as a normal System 5 detached daemon. Uh, before 5.7, you would have to run the MySQL D underscore safe uh, thing to, to actually detach. That's the one that detaches. MySQL D in 5.6 and earlier doesn't detach. Uh, there's a kind of wrapper that detaches for you. Um, and MySQL 5.7 can actually detach, and um, it will log to syslog directly, which the wrapper usually uh, is 
used for uh, in 5.6 and earlier. And we've also created a service file uh, for uh, SysMD. Currently, it's unchanged. It's the same file in all distros. We have a few CMake options that will generate the file to just set, give the service name and, and the location of the PID file, I think. Uh, the rest is the same, and I really hope we can keep the same one in all distros. That would be a real win for, for this. Then, if you have client applications, this is probably the biggest one for you guys. The other ones are, are more important to the package maintainers of MySQL server. Uh, we are bumping the ABI version to 20. It's uh, 18 in 5.6, but it probably should have been 19. There was a slight ABI break there that we didn't discover. Um, we discovered it too late to get, make it into Jesse, actually. Um, that's why there's only MySQL 5.5 in Jesse. Um, but in, in uh, 5.7, we skipped the 19 in case we actually need it in 5.6, uh, because, but we think that will actually create more problems. We haven't used it. But we bumped it to 20, um, and we have a limited list of exported symbols. MySQL, actually, until uh, 5.7, has exported all the symbols the client library, uh, which means that it's um, not easy to link with. Uh, if, you have, if you're linking in uh, some SSL library, for instance, it happens to be the same one as MySQL is using, now it's not a good thing. Um, so in 5.7, it's restricted. Uh, we've chosen to restrict it to the documented uh, API. We know people are using more functions in the client library. We've added a few of those, but I expect some client applications to fail to compile with the new library. If it does, and you're a package maintainer, tell the upstream author and tell us. If it's really needed by the upstream, we can add it in 5.7. Um, we can just add a symbol because the, the symbol is there in kind of internally in the library. We just need to expose it. Uh, we can do that in 5.7 stable releases um, because we, we kind of increase in the version number and we're adding stuff, uh, no problem. Uh, so we expect there to be maybe a few of those, but we tried, we spent a lot of time trying to figure out uh, which symbols we need. That is why we have more than just a publicly documented API, but really applications should stick to the documented API and not go beyond that. Um, but if there's something missing, uh, our goal is to actually add it to the API in a proper way instead of dealing with undocumented symbols. Uh, we also coordinated with Fedora and Red Hat, so that's from Fedora 21, maybe, or and later, uh, you can take an application compiled on Fedora and, and run it on Debian. You couldn't before, because we screwed up the uh, symbols file at some point. They discovered that, and instead of reporting a bug, they fixed it in their own distribution, and it ended up being a different fix than what we did in MySQL. So, but we resolved that with uh, Fedora. Um, so now it's, it's uh, from Red Hat 7 and Fedora 21 or something. It's the same uh, symbols. Um, some things we haven't done is to add package config uh, files in addition to the traditional MySQL config uh, scripts. Uh, but we're thinking about doing that. Uh, if you're using the uh, reentrant lib MySQL client library, please stop doing that. The, the uh, lib normal lib MySQL client library has been reentrant for many, many years. There's no reason to use the underscore R. It's just a sim link to the normal library. Uh, but finally, in 5.7, we might remove that. Um, that might cause some applications to, to fail a bit as well. And we have a few security hardening features. Um, our goal is to be secured by default. Um, that means we should have no known attack vectors on default install. Well, what does the default install mean? Because um, the way we do it when you download our, our source and then make, run make install is different from, from what you get when you install in Debian. But it's more or less the same things we'll have to think about. So when we make our install secure, um, it means that the Debian uh, installation is either sec uh, more secure or they will not have to patch or run special scripts to, to make it secure. 
So in 5.7, the, uh, if you know the test database that we used to have, it's gone. There are no default grants. You would need to add an option to get those if you want to. Um, the root user doesn't have an empty password as its fault. Uh, in Debian, this was never a problem because Debian asked for the password on install. But in uh, Fedora, for instance, um, it was, uh, the install is um, non-interactive, so they can't ask for a password. So now they will get a random password. It's put into a file somewhere. And, yeah, some, some trick there. Um, SSL is turned on by default. Um, so the client, will, client library will try to use SSL. Um, uh, and we have done some changes that might affect um, uh, security enhanced Linux or app armor profiles. Uh, there are, um, for instance, uh, the socket file in, well, in Debian, Debian is safe on this point. Debian has used the var run location for, for socket files for a while, but um, other distros haven't. Uh, they put in, uh, in with the data directory and that means all clients need to get uh, access permissions to that data directory. So um, that means that some security enhanced Linux profiles and app ARM profiles need to be changed. Um, that's one of the consequences. That's, just, that's actually the hard part of this. Uh, we need to change those profiles upstream in, in, uh, in those packages. Um, other, this is just a list of, of random changes, more or less. Um, but if you're building a server, you might notice that we are actually depending on boost at the moment in 5.7. Uh, and we will for the foreseeable future. Uh, we use it for uh, GS, especially. Um, so I know this very well. Um, and we need one exact boost version. Uh, that is because if we upgrade, currently we're on 158. Uh, 159 was released on uh, Monday or th Tuesday or whatever. Um, and we don't pass tests if you upgrade. Um, uh, one reason for that is actually a bug in MySQL 5.7. Um, another one is, is that there are floating point numbers in there. And they, it's very sensitive to, uh, to changing floating point uh, calculations and, and the order of calculations. So, Usually there are a few minor decimals changing on a number here and there in test suites, um, which means that our recorded uh, test cases are, have a slightly different result. Um, but mostly it's possible to build with newer versions of MySQL, uh, newer versions of Boost. You can usually not build with older versions of Boost because we are actively ex extending Boost geometry. We have two engineers full time on, on extending Boost geometry. So we use whatever is the the newest when we, we freeze this. This will be frozen um, before a uh, stable release, and we'll stick to that version for, for the stable release. That's the plan. Um, but if you need to upgrade, uh, we do make the patches because we are continuously upgrading ourselves for the um, current development branch. So we might adapt the patches, but you won't kind of benefit the, uh, from the uh, QA that we do uh, because we don't do QA with MySQL 5.7 with newer boosts than what we promise will work. Uh, the solution for packs maintainers is, uh, well, what we recommend is to, um, to uh, build the package from two sources, from the boost tarball and from the MySQL tarball, because we're only using header files. We're not using the runtime libraries. Um, another option, of course, is to just make sure that the header files from that boost version is in um, in the distro, but I know some distros don't like to have more than one boost uh, uh, version at the same time. So uh, one easy solution is to just b build from two source tables. Um, I think that's, that's what, what we may, may choose in Debian as well. Uh, at least that's the current, um, current opinion of the uh, most involved Debian developer at the moment. Um, I'm not a Debian developer, I'm just uh, tagging along. Um, but um, uh, that seems to be the, the way to go currently because then we don't introduce new packages. We don't have requirements on other teams to include more uh, boost packages and we won't in kind of introduce special MySQL boost header packages that will be misused by other um, packages. Uh, 
we will add a runtime dependency on MiCab for um, for full text search in Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and whatever. Um, you can disable it in the build if you don't want it, but uh, uh, that's uh, something you probably want if you want to be a global uh, and uh, was, uh, it's, um, internationalized distribution. Um, it works with uh, the uh, Mika version in Debian at the moment, I think. Um, Mika is relatively stable on, on versions, so this is not a big problem. Um, We've changed the defaults for some config variables, uh, which will no doubt uh, hit some users. Uh, generally, we're changing in the uh, to be more strict than we have been. So strict mode on the defaults, uh, and strict mode is stricter. Uh, kind of trying to merge MySQL and SQL in a way. So we're trying to move towards standard SQL as much as possible. Uh, these extensions that have been there for, for years, they, some of them block other standard features. So we really try to move to more strict and uh, more formally correct SQL uh, where, when we can. Uh, but kind of, we have a lot of users, they are slow to adapt, so we need to think about that as well. Um, we also had some spring cleaning in the, uh, well actually I think it was a fall cleaning, it happened last fall, um, in removing some legacy utilities. Um, uh, for instance, the uh, SQL bench program that was shipped in MySQL is gone. Uh, we weren't using it, we weren't maintaining it, so, well, it's still there if you look at old tarballs, you don't need to go to the 5.7 tarball to get it. So, uh, it's GPL, you can, I, th I think it's GPL at least. Uh, otherwise, it's some other open source license. Uh, but um, you can get it from somewhere else. We don't need to maintain it in the 5.7 package. We removed most of the Perl dependencies. Uh, we're trying to move away from Perl uh, because Perl doesn't run that well on Windows and we are cl uh, cross-platform to, to a large degree, um, which meant that we have, we've had to maintain some separate tools for Windows since we have Perl tools, and then uh, it's just much easier if we compile things in C, C++, and, and instead of using Perl scripts. Um, one big change for people that kind of run MySQL manually and install th things is that uh, the Perl script that used to be MySQL install DB is now an option to the server that says dash dash initialize, and it will kind of um, create system tables and, and get your MySQL up running uh, for the first time. And then we have some forever ongoing work to be warning free on GCC and Clang. That's our goal. Uh, so every time we upgrade our Debian computers, our Ubuntu computers, our Fedora, Red Hat, whatever, uh, whatever version of, of um, of GCC and Clang is in there, we will run it, we say, oh no, one more warning, one new warning added in a new GCC version, and then we will fix it. We try to always be warning free. Um, or if it's pointless to fix it, or it's hard to fix it without kind of doing something ugly, we will disable that warning explicitly for that file. Uh, but we, we try to be warning free. We're not warning free on Visual Studio. Um, you probably don't care about that, but you should because uh, if one compiler finds something dubious in the code, then maybe other users are interested too. So we're trying to get to move towards warning free on Visual Studio as well. Uh, no guarantees, but uh, we reduce the number of warnings at least. Um, but it's a lot of them. Uh, MySQL is mostly developed on GCC. Uh, that's what the developers run it on. Some some Linux distribution and GCC. That's the normal. Um, some people are using Clang. Um, we were using Clang for some of the uh, some of the uh, extra tools like um, um, address sanitizer and stuff, but now GCC has them as well. Um, but uh, GCC and Clang are the kind of the most important ones uh, for us there. So uh, that was uh, what I had, um, uh, and if you want to know more about what's going on in development, there's the Server engineering, the developer's uh, blog. Um, we have one for release engineering as well. You might find some packaging stuff in there. 
And as always, if you're in doubt, just check the source code. We moved from Bazaar to Git um, almost a year ago, and uh, we're not looking back, and we're on GitHub instead of Launchpad, where we used to be. Um, are there any questions? Hello, this is not relating to packaging, but uh, have you changed uh, the car set for connecting car set? You know, it used to be Latin and Swedish, <laughs> Latin one, Swedish. Yeah, I think it's, it used to be UTF-8 in Debian, didn't it? Um, I know we've been talking about it, um, but I'm not really sure what's currently the default character set. Uh, I would have to check, so... Um, uh, but I think the Debian package is using UTF-8. So uh, if you're using Debian, you will have UTF-8. Uh, but uh, from upstream sources, I'm not sure. Um, the current MySQL packages are not very friendly to uh, running in a bigger environment where you have multiple databases in a master-slave relationship. Uh, if I recall correctly, um, Postins and other maintainer scripts try to do stuff like repair tables or um, migrate to newer versions, which is not what you usually want. Um, do you have any plans of following such a mode where the maintainer scripts would do nothing or just skip everything? No. Uh, yeah, so the question was if we're about to, uh, if, if we have plans in Debian to do something about um, server settings where you host multiple MySQL instances. In, on one computer, was that the? Um, when you have a large environment with multiple databases yeah. uh, in master-slave environment, you don't want, and you upgrade a slave, oh, yeah. you don't want the slave to start doing repair tables or migrate to uh, whatever migration stuff the maintainer scripts do. Um, so the maintainer scripts right now, Postins, does various things that you don't want to do on a slave. Yeah. Um, how can you, are you planning to fix that? Okay, very good question. Um, I haven't heard any, any explicit plans for doing that. Uh, the Debian post in scripts are, are doing some, some, um, um, some operations on, on your database. Um, just to summarize the question. And, and if we have any plans to, to change the packaging. Uh, currently, no, but that's a real good point, and we should talk afterwards. Um, we should really discuss that in a packaging team uh, to figure out what to do. Um, one more question, I think, if there's anyone. Okay, then thank you for having me. <laughs>